cool. So today I want to discuss some MIDI editing tricks. So the easiest way to do this is probably going to be to, with something like a, a drum machine. So I'm going to go ahead and load up Cubase's Groove Agent. So the first thing I want to show you guys is lanes, um, something that a lot of guys don't know about in Cubase. So let's actually go ahead and put in some hi-hats over here. So lanes is a nice way of being able to like split up different elements in the drum kit and uh, program them in the MIDI separately. Um, this is very helpful for, for example, uh, adding like groove to a particular element, like swing or something like that. So let's say, for example, add some swing to these hats. Um, actually, first, let's program in some of the other drum beat elements. So let's just put in like snares here. I think a more electronic kick could uh, do well there. So this is a cool way of being able to, you know, program these things and then let's say for example it's much easier to jump in there. You can actually color them individually. Like let's say for example, make the kicks red, the snares orange. <clears throat> so then if we want to go in and bounce them individually, we can like just solo the kick or just solo the snare or something like that. It's a little bit easier to work with after the fact. We can kind of like select all of these hi-hats, apply some swing to just the hi-hats. So to make things easier when I'm editing them, I generally like to have the like bulk of the stuff like somewhere at the beginning of the project, but then you can actually go ahead and like mute them. So they're not actually going to play, but you always got the ability to go back and edit them if you need. So I want to show you guys another little uh, feature that I feel not very many people know about in Cubase, and that's the ability to merge all of the MIDI in the loop. So one thing you got to take note is that it actually works with all of the MIDI uh, vertically so it's going to grab you know if, if for example these are here it's going to merge the MIDI in other channels as well which is a bit of a weird thing I'm not quite sure why it does that but anyway what we can do is we can just you know create a loop point around the block of MIDI that we want to merge press P and then it creates the kind of markers there it's the shortcut for that right click and then we can say so in previous versions, it was right click and then uh, MIDI, merge MIDI and loop, but they've moved it over to the MIDI menu at the top left of the screen over here. Uh, and you can go click on MIDI and then merge MIDI in loop. Uh, you can choose various different parameters here. Um, I don't think it uh, matters all that much because we don't really having uh, that many inserts and sends on this MIDI track. But you will see what it's done is it's actually created like a duplicate of this, which we can then go and delete. So now we've got like our entire kind of drum MIDI in a single kind of MIDI file. Um, you know, those hi-hats and stuff are kind of, s have their own swing to them, which is slightly different to like the swing of the kick and stuff. So it's kind of got a bit of a different groove, which is pretty cool. So a lot of people don't actually know that Cubase has a retrospective MIDI record function. Um, essentially what that is, is it allows you to grab MIDI from the past that you may have jammed without hitting the record function. 
So let's say, for example, it's, it's always by default on, I believe, in the later Cubase versions. Um, but let's say if we're playing a track and we just happen to jam like a, a melody or something that works. So say, for example, we like jamming the track. And we were like, oh, damn, we forgot to hit that record button. Over here, under transport, also uh, in your file options at the top left, you've got this retrospective MIDI record. The, the, the hotkey is actually shift and num asterisk. So now what it's done is it's actually given us the MIDI that we've played without having to actually record the MIDI. So a lot of the time, this is a weird kind of placebo thing that I've noticed is the moment you hit record, then you're kind of like quite nervous and you miss a lot of those things. Um, whereas having to just be able to jam it and then pull it out retrospectively, it works for modulations and stuff as well. Um, very, very cool feature that a lot of people don't actually know Cubase has built in. Um, so obviously it's not quantized. So we will have to then select everything and adjust the quantize. I'm not sure if there's actually a setting. I must uh, double check that. I'm not sure if there's a setting to auto quantize the retrospective record. That would be pretty cool. So another thing that I actually use quite a lot on my channel that I do get quite some questions about is the MIDI modifiers over here. So what this allows you to do is transpose a specific um, MIDI to fit within the track. So I'm going to show you a quick example here. This like melody is in C minor. And if I turn this MIDI modifiers off, it's not going to fit in with the rest of the track. So what I'm doing with the MIDI modifiers is I'm, I'm turning each of these MIDI notes that's sending to the plugin down by minus four. And there's various other things you can do with this. Um, you can shift the velocities um, so you can kind of like boost them up or down. Um, what you can also do is you can set randomizations, for example, random velocities. So min to max, let's say minus 120 to plus 120. Um, you can also do pitch and stuff like that. So that's cool for like drum sounds and that kind of thing. Um, but it can get a little bit crazy. Um, so that's cool for, you know, say for example, plugins that might not have randomization. So this patch, I don't think has any velocity sensitivity in it, but we can assign some here. Um, you can also set specific scales for the MIDI to snap to, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to get too advanced with that um, for you guys. You can dive in and have a look or post in the comments if you want me to do more advanced uh, tutorials on each of these specific elements. So another thing I want to quickly look at is track versions over here under the inspector. So what this allows you to do is create various versions of each of these MIDI tracks and cycle through them to find like the best one. So one thing it's very handy for is creating variety of kind of like uh, modulation patterns and seeing which one fits a particular melody or particular synth sound or something like that. 
So say, for example, we've got this uh, serum lead that we've recorded in here. I actually want to turn this random velocity off quickly so it's a bit more stable. And then in the patch, I actually want to assign uh, my mod wheel on this MIDI controller. Uh, let's say mod wheel to the filter cutoff. And let's turn the bass cutoff down a bit. So what it's handy for is uh, track versions. We can say duplicate version. And now copy of version one, we can select this one. And let's uh, record in a automation. So I actually want to turn this read right off here. So I've just got the mod wheels movement coming through there. Um, and then show you guys, you can actually cycle between them like this. So let's say for example, I didn't actually like this one too much. Uh, we can just go back to number one, duplicate version again, and then try again. And then you can cycle through them, audition them, see which one was the best. So that's a very handy little trick for that kind of thing. Um, also, I might as well show you guys um, another handy one is to double press on your hotkey one, and that turns your cursor into a time stretcher for the MIDI. Um, it works for audio as well, I guess. And then do the modulation in half time. And then what you can do is go like this, just make it like the same length as the MIDI, glue them together, and then back to the time stretch, and then make it like that. So now you've got like a lot more kind of resolution control, um, makes it a bit easier to play like those faster MIDI passages and stuff, I guess. Okay, so now I want to show you a thing called expression, I think it's called expression maps. Um, basically what it is, is a little bit more advanced MIDI uh, abilities that Cubase have uh, built in, in terms of the MIDI editing. I just want to show you guys how to set it up here with something like Hive, for example. So I'm just going to initialize this patch. And let's just put some effects. And here in the settings, you've got these controls here, control A and control B. And these are set to CC2 and CC11, breath and expression. So I wanna show you guys what exactly these are doing. So here in the matrix, we can set control A to, to modulate like our vibrato, for example, and then control B to modulate our like filter, for example. And then there's no actual notes coming through, but if we make a MIDI clip and duplicate it a bunch of times, and to put in some notes, um, I actually want to 
transpose it minus four just so I can put it in C a little bit easier for me. So if we solo this and play it, no sound. And that's because the filter is at the lowest. So here, if we double click on the note, you get this pop-up menu over here. And in our top left here, we got expression, note expression. And we can set this to CC11 expression. You gotta actually select it. And now you can actually draw in. So you've got like per note MIDI modulation. Okay, so I'll probably wanna use curves here. Maybe this will make this a bit. So this is handy to do like more complex kind of uh, MIDI articulations and stuff where say for example you want one note to have like a little vibrato flourish and another one not to have that uh, vibrato flourish but just like a, a different kind of filter. Okay, a bit of a weird example, but you guys get the picture. <clears throat> a big thanks to IDM Mag, proud supporters of the dance music scene and my channel.